Good morning. This is Deacon Don LaRose from Holy Family Church bringing to you um, a message today that I find really fascinating actually about um, the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. You know, Christmas Day is, is so special to all of humanity, of course, because that's the day that Jesus became present to all of us physically on earth. His physical body was born that day in Bethlehem. At the Last Supper, of course, he broke, he broke the bread and gave it to the apostles and said, Eat this bread. It is my body that will be given up for you, and do this in memory of me. From that day until now, his closest followers have believed that what he told them was the gospel truth, that when the bread is consecrated in remembrance of him at Mass, that bread actually physically becomes his true body and the wine his true blood, the true essence of Jesus. Now, as many of you, you may know, in 2019, a survey was done of Catholics. It was completed by the Pew Research Group that showed that, of, that if those Catholics surveyed, only 31%, only 31%, of that group of Catholics believed that the bread and wine at Mass become the true body and blood of Jesus. A full 69% said they think that the bread and wine are really just, they just represent his body and blood. However, within that group, 43% said they not only believe that it just represents the body and blood of Jesus, but they thought that's also what the, the church, the Catholic Church taught, which of course is incorrect. So the church has not done a really good job of of communicating what we believe, and that is that the bread and wine truly become the true body of Jesus. Recently, a parishioner um, gave me two books that I found very interesting that really, I think relate to this, this uh, subject. The first um, is The Eucharistic Miracles of the World, this book here, and it's uh, sanctioned by the Catholic Church. <clears throat> it's um, in it. <clears throat> It tells that, you know, there's been really hundreds of Eucharistic-related miracles throughout the world over the generations, hundreds. And they've occurred in, in a great many countries, not just in one part of the world or just one country, not just Italy or whatever. Um, <clears throat> this, that, this particular book chronicles the details of about a hundred of those miracles and in, in 20 different countries. The earliest one described in the book dates to the year 595 in Rome. And with others occurring, you know, throughout, the, from then till now, including in, in the year 1010 in Spain, in 1216 in Belgium. Even St. Thomas Aquinas, who lived in the, in the 1200s, he wrote about this phenomenon in his famous Summa Theologica. There are also many more recent examples, um, as well as, uh, for example, one in, taking place in 1991 in Venezuela, 2001 in India, 2006 in Mexico, with the most recent one being in Poland in 2016. Now, these Eucharistic events all vary in a variety of ways, uh, but a common such event might sound something like this. The scenario might be something like this, and that is that the parish priest, the pastor even, um, is beginning to lose his faith, especially in the true presence. And during a regular Mass, a Eucharist falls to the ground, um, and so it's picked up and put in, in water to be dissolved because the normal way that um, the Eucharist is disposed of in that circumstance is it's dissolved in water and then poured down the sacrarium sink, um, which all, all churches have, and it's a sink that doesn't go into the sewer but actually goes right into the ground, so it's like a burial. Those Eucharists are, have been set, set aside in these cases and uh, sometimes put even in... Um, uh, the tabernacle, waiting for it to, to dissolve. But in these cases, these miraculous cases, instead of the Eucharist dissolving, as it normally would, it inexplicably remains intact. And then a small stain of what looks like blood begins to appear on it. Quite often, the priest contacts his bishop to report this unusual happening, and the reactions differ, as all people's reactions to things do, but in many cases, the bishop gives very strict instructions to protect it, and then to have it examined to see what the stain is. Which brings me to the second book. The second book that my parishioner uh, gave um, was A Cardiologist Examines the Eucharist. And this is published just last year and written by Dr. Uh, Franco uh, Serafini out of Italy. In this book, Dr. Serafini reports on the examinations 
of five specific Eucharistic miracles, all of, all of which had undergone rigorous scientific analysis in recent years. The first was from the year in the 700s, 700s AD in Lanciano, Italy. There were three from one single parish in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1992, 94, and 96. Another one in Mexico in 2006, and then um, finally two different um, events that took place in, in Poland, one in two different parishes, 2008 and 2013. And what was learned in these examinations is really mind-blowing. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. For example, on the first one from the 700s, Italy, the Eucharist, it still exists. And it's been inspected by local church authorities uh, almost every century since then. It was examined in 1971 and 1981 by Professor Odorato Linoli, um, who was an anatomical pathologist and head of the medical campus at Arezio, Italy. And his conclusions from studying a piece of the blood-stained Eucharist from the 700s is that, number one, the blood stain is real human blood and human flesh. The blood type is AB. In fact, all of, very interesting, very interesting is that all of these miracles, um, Eucharist, the blood type is always AB. Also very interesting, including, again, this is a, this piece being tested from the 700s. They didn't even know what blood types were then. It hadn't been discovered yet. In fact, you may be interested to find out that also on the Shroud of Turin, the blood stains that have been tested are also type AB. The blood proteins uh, that are fractioned in ratios, they came from what they describe as basically fresh blood, which is highly unusual. This piece of Eucharist was from the 700s AD. And he concluded that the, the human flesh that was part of that stain is actually from the heart muscle, in, in particular the internal lining of the heart. Um, DNA tests on all of the te uh, examples were inconclusive. In the study on the Eucharist in Buenos Aires from in the 1990s, the sample was given to two different doctors, a, 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 an oncologist and a hermito hermitologist. Neither of them was told what they were testing, what, you know, what, where the sample came from, what the origin was. One of those doctors, and you find this really incredibly fascinating, one of those doctors, Edhelm Sussat, he wrote that one of the times, this is a quote, one of the times I observed it, I noticed an area that seemed to be rhythmically beating. It was beating like a live heart tissue. Another doctor, Dr. Robert Lawrence, who's a medical examiner in Stockton, California, he examined a sample of it in March 20, 2004. And again, not knowing where the tissue came from. And his observations included seeing a large number of white blood cells as would happen with inflammation of the tissue, as would occur with some sort of trauma in the tissue. And that the blood cells, this is very interesting, and that the blood cells taken were active and living at the time the sample was taken. <clears throat> he added that this is inexplicable because white blood cells um, usually dissolve in just a few minutes or up to an hour at the most. And these were still living when the sample was taken. The last of the notes on examinations I'll mention is from a sample that was sent to Professor Frederick um, Zugby, who was a chief medical examiner and cardiologist in Rockland County, New York, with 30 years experience and has done over 30,000 autopsies. He asked, he wanted to know what this origin was, that he was where, where, where this came from, the sample that he's going to test. They, they didn't tell him. They didn't want to taint his view of it. And after his examination, he said this, and these are quotes. I'm a heart specialist. The heart is my business. Referring to this particular sample, he said, this is heart muscle tissue coming from the left ventricle near a valvular area. He also said, the cardiac muscle is inflamed and it has lost its striations and inflated leukocytes. He said, this person's heart has been wounded and has suffered trauma, like what I see in road accidents or someone who's received severe blows to the chest. And he also said, this was a live sample at the time it was taken. Other than that, ish, that um, tissue from the 700s, all four of the other examples that were, uh, samples that were tested from the different miracles all had the similar results. Dr. Serafini wrote in the book that, quote, this miraculous tissue was living and functioning as though it was still connected to a complete invisible body. It's in explicable. 
These are the actual and real, result, real results of scientific examinations by experts in their field. Now, we say that the results of these studies are, can't be explained, they're inexplicable, but Jesus told us what this was from the very beginning. And it shows that the true presence of his actual body and blood are there in your hands every time you receive him at Mass. What looks like a wafer of bread and a cup of wine truly is the body of Christ. Amen.